Hello, good morning. Welcome to Kwok Talk here in Think Tech Hawaii. You know, we are so blessed here in here, Hawaii, to have beautifully rich and fertile soil. You know that? But how do you keep it for fertile? I mean, like, what does it mean to be fertile? And what is fertility to you? Ah, that is the question we ask today particularly how women are connected to the earth and more. So today, we are going to discuss this topic with two beautiful earth goddesses, sisters from the farm who bring energy and, well, fertility to the farm where they work at. At that point, let me introduce these two lovely girls. You've got Emily and Elizabeth Beagle. Welcome. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank oh, you come on. Us. You get yeah. the got a bigger voice than yeah. that. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Thank, Thank you for coming. I just want to let everyone know that the reason I know these girls is because my son was um, volunteering at the uh, farm. And uh, I learned a lot about uh, the earth and getting my hands dirty and, and, and learning the process. And, and it's just the most beautiful thing. I think, really, it comes down to this process that makes us who we are as humans. So today we're going to link that earth and fertility to us women being fertile. So let's back up a little bit and give us an idea of where you girls are from and what brought you to Hawaii to start this farm. Okay. Would you like? So we're originally we're from the East Coast and we started farming and we've been farming for about a decade and it took us west, 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 west um, until we landed in Hawaii where there was um, a contest that um, camp schools put on and the winner of the agribusiness plan contest got a rent waived parcel of farmland for five years and some startup money. And wow. we won! We won! So here we, we are! Did you never win anything? Never win anything! Yay! Yay! Two photos! What? So you packed up your bags and moved to Hawaii yeah. with a blank lot for you to do something with. Yes, and I'm so glad we're talking about soil fertility because. Our soil was so depleted oh, when we came in. Oh, so I was wrong. So, Whoa. In the beginning, I in thought Hawaii, beginning. everything was all fine. Oh, well, Close. I think in the beginning it was, but it was, um, the land was, but it was farmed for sugar cane for oh. all those years. And, and the sugar cane is, takes so much out of the soil and nothing was put back. I'm glad you said that because today yeah. in the news, uh, today was the final harvesting day in Maui for the sugar cane oh, wow. yeah. It's very sad, but it's the end yeah. of the era, but yeah. it's, uh, I didn't know that it depletes so much of the soil. So right. yeah, tell and me. Monocrops in general, um, there's no opportunity to put nutrients and compost and, and all of the good things that, you, that the plants eat and take out. Um, you, ha you should probably put it back. And so monocrops like sugar cane um, don't give much back to the soil. So the, the land that we came upon so gratefully was great piece of land, just happened to be quite low on all of the, oh, wow. on all of the good things. Okay, so what did you have to do and how long did it take to bring fertility to that soil? Well, for us, fertility is, is kind of a two-part um, approach. It's, it's what the soil is part of and then it's what it can produce. Uh -huh. And so for us, we had to uh, create crop production schedules and cover crop and put back into the earth before we could take out. So right. that took quite a while to get that farmland into crop ready um, right. mode. But. but I will say, I think just like maybe women's fertility, it's not just about what you put in. Yeah. It's a more of a systems approach. So when we farm, we don't just, you know, take wheelbarrows full of compost and call it good. Okay. Just like maybe if you just have healthy smoothies all day. And pop in all those vitamins. Pop in all those vitamins. Yeah. That's yeah. not quite it because um, um, there's so much more to it than just the inputs, which right. I think is true for, right. for health as well. What a well. great analogy. So, yeah. so that's an ongoing process. That's not something you can kind of crunch. No, because the soil is alive, right? Yes. And it, um, just like your whole body is a system that works together, right. the soil does the same. And so, for example, it's not just the nutrients that we put in the soil, it's how aerated is the soil, how, um, how loamy is it, how the roots need to grow, but right. they, um, they need space and air and water to yeah. do so. And so can the soil retain water? Can, right, so they have, you have all of these um, things beyond <laughs> let's go buy a bag of fertilizer. And you have to, I don't even know the terms for this stuff. And like when you do it on the farm <laughs> and you like, you know, kind of loosen yeah. up the soil mm -hmm. or is mm -hmm. that? Yeah. Yes, because we're trying to break it up and allow the water 
and the nutrients to get in. The water can go where the air can't, right. and that will help distribute nutrients, and then also let other stuff work its way up. Yeah. Um, right. So, and that said, um, but just um, maybe for example, if you're exercising, you don't okay. want to overdo it, right? So we also uh, don't want to, when you, so we disc the soil and rip the soil and right. till the soil is the last. Okay, step. till. That's till. what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> but the the more you expose it, the soil to air, yeah. um, the more carbon is lost, and the more you know, you can overdo it and sunburn your soil type of thing. Oh. Just like I think, you can overdo. Well, that's the exercise. You, know, yeah. you don't just keep mashing it up because it right. needs to live. It you you to need sun. space for it to rest and yeah, to yeah, grow. Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. Now that you mentioned the sun, I had to ask you about the sun because the sun, you need the sun to have things grow, but at the same time, the sun to us women is the most damaging thing for our skin. Mm -hmm, right. So it, is it, how same, do you see that? Same. Ah. You see a, if you see a, an open farm field that's been tilled, like, you know, you see the big red squares on the side of the road. Right. That's something that we try to avoid because... Oh, I so thought I, red was good. No. I'm so clueless. No, no, no. Well, I mean, it's good for the moment right before you plant. Okay. But if you're not planning to plant, okay. um, soil gets sunburned just like we do. So most and that's why it's red? Well, no. 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 Okay, that's but if it's open dirt, okay. it makes it more susceptible to the burn. Okay. So, so we would rather cover crop it and have, have some shade. Have a habitat for all the healthy microorganisms that grow in the soil and all of the beneficial bugs. That's right? when you put those plastics to cover up? That's when we, when we, in a section of field that we're not trying to produce on, Right. we don't just leave it exposed and empty. We okay. cover it with beneficial um, plants that we then, when we're ready to farm it, we till into the soil. So it's like putting on lotion. Or like Put, a facial, it yeah. has serums that just kind of need to absorb slowly without mm -hmm. doing anything to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's just the same thing as sunscreen or, or serum, you know. I never thought of soil yeah. being able to be burnt. I mean, that's yeah. just such uh, a, yeah. wow. Because left to its own devices, yeah. of things course, would Earth grow, is, yeah. you know, right. but we mess it up. Oh, that's, I mean, that is such a loaded word <laughs> on our earth if you're going to talk about that. But yeah. what about that whole concept of, you know, your hands on literally? I mean, when I remember getting dirt in my nails, I remember I'm complaining, but you guys are there 24 7 and you have to watch them, rain or shine, you have to watch it. And how, how do you, what is your connection to the earth? Do you feel like that's pulling you over or you're trying to do something for it to come out? I, I really feel like. The earth is gifting us with whatever yeah. it allows us to grow because we never can outsmart it. We never can trick it. Uh, man, we've tried everything to try to, you know, force production or oh. um, get it to give us what we want. And all the time, it's like, no, 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 it tells no, you no, no, no. So, so it has to be. Um, a give and take reciprocal yeah. and so we really try to be really kind to it. <laughs> What's a good example of something you thought you were going to grow and it didn't because it didn't allow you? Pumpkins! <laughs> okay. Pumpkins! What's that? Oh man, he I have every year. Every year! Wait, so Halloween this year you didn't have any pumpkins again? I had like five, but I had at <laughs> least an <laughs> acre of pure pumpkin plants. Yeah. I, was, I was doing everything I could and they <laughs> did not did not want that happen. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what about the other one? Something you didn't expect to grow so well and it just flourished? I would say cherry tomatoes. Yeah. Oh, we were, that's my favorite. Right? Part. They were oh, so good. I them so much. We were told that, you know, oh, it's really hard to grow tomatoes and it is hard to grow tomatoes anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, we didn't really even do that much. Huh. And they grew. But maybe they just knew how much we loved them. Uh, <laughs> well, that's the thing. <laughs> do you feel, I mean, some people think it's a hokey thing to say you talk to your plants and all that, but that oh. connection, all right, so please, <laughs> yeah. tell me that connection. What's your relationship with them? Well, you're right, it's hokey. <laughs> it is so hokey. Do you really? I you love my plants. <laughs> I, love, I do. I, I care for them. And, and protect them. I'll go around and pull out the weak ones. Yeah. Oh, oh no, she'll no, go no. pick them up and plant <laughs> them. Everybody gets, okay. <laughs> Everybody gets a chance. Everybody gets a chance. Kind of like an abandoned yeah. baby who's yeah. not too healthy. It's like, yeah. oh, wait, we have yeah. a chance. We'll feed it the proper things. Yeah. That doesn't no. make me a bad person. No. <laughs> Some of us care about production, too. Yeah, I know. I think um, they're alive. They really yes. are alive. Yes. And um, I just like, just like our bodies or our kids or, you know, 
you care about keeping them alive. Yeah. That's the point. Well, and but when people are pregnant with their right. babies, some people, especially in Chinese people in cultures, you think you're going to feed them so much, not just the, the essence, the vitamins, but the intelligence they think you're going to feed oh. them. They're going to be listening to stupid baby Mozart and, and read these books that they think they're going to all be Einsteins. Now, <laughs> when it comes to the farm, <laughs> like you said, they, they pick you, you don't pick them in a way. <laughs> Do you think there's that randomness, that kind of something bigger? has for us, no matter how much you try to do something or how much our effort really does bear fruit. Absolutely. Absolutely. Abs I mean, you, Which you way spend you think time is? there. It's, I think we're at the mercy of, of okay. this. It's, it's magical this. that these little dry seeds grow into, and I know it's not magic, but it feels magical. They grow it into is, though, these it's so huge fast. Yeah, and I think like a little dried seed is. Come on, this is amazing. Yeah, and yeah. that's not to say we don't put a lot of practiced work into it. Kind of like when you have your children and you give them a great upbringing, and then you send them off to college, and then they have to do their own thing. Uh -huh. So we do all the preparation. All these plants are our kids, and then sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and if you don't, oh, if you don't take care of them well enough. You're going to have bad soil for the next generation. Yep. yep. <laughs> See? Right? Yes. So you guys yes. need to. And that's part of what you do to educate kids. You go to schools to tell yeah. them about, uh, tell us about that. Well, um, we just have the best time. We, we probably visit about four or 500 kids a month going into classrooms. And the curriculum is healthy nutrition. It's either nutrition or um, cooking. Okay. And, and we try to combine it, but depending on, it's K through six that we do. Nice. We go in and... Um, you bring in like a bunch of Bring in a bunch of stuff yeah. and, and a healthy recipe and then the kids help cook and, and the, of course, the best part is the snack. What if they go, oh, I hate beets. Oh, oh, we oh, love that. that. Yeah. yeah, love it. So you, you love transform to trick them. them. Yes. You trick them. Mm -hmm. How do you trick them to eat mm -hmm. beets? Tell me. Go ahead. Oh, well, you know what? Let's do a quick break. We'll come back and you give that magic thing. Okay. So all the parents out there will know how to trick their kids to eat veggies. All right, we'll be back soon. Aloha, my name is Justine Spiritu. This is my co-host Matthew Johnson. Every Thursday at 4 p.m. on ThinkTech, we host the Hawaii Food and Farmers series. We like to bring in folks from the whole realm of the local food supply and agriculture, anyone working on these issues, any organization or individual that has plans or projects. What kind of people have we had on? Uh, so we've had farmers, we've had chefs, we've had people from government, uh, larger institutions, everyone who's working to help make Hawaii's local food system that much better. So you can see us every Thursday and join the conversation on Twitter, and we hope to see you there. Aloha, everyone. I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Okay. Mahalo. Yes. Okay. I'm going to go with that. All right, so back on Think Tech, I'm Crystal, and this is a beat. And we, as adults, a lot of us love it, but a lot of kids don't. And Elizabeth was just saying that you teach the kids how to learn to love vegetables and how to cook them. And you were right. saying there's a trick to getting them to eat this stuff. Well, um, our favorite thing is to make hummus with beets <gasps> in it. And oh. it's so vibrant and so magenta. And it, doesn't, it tastes like hummus. And then the kids dip all their vegetables in it and oh, then nice. if, if we're feeling generous we're being tortilla chips and that really goes okay. down quickly. <laughs> so you don't tell them there are beets in it? No, they cook. They know. Oh, okay. We cook together. So what's so in it? What's the ingredients for well, the beet hummus? The ingredients are tahini, lemon juice, roasted garlic, um, beets that are either boiled or roasted or some way made soft. And then the other trick is instead of chickpeas, um, we put in these um, Okinawan sweet potatoes. And oh, so, um, is it heavier? It's really no. not. They kind of whip up. They yeah, and it's up. so sweet and delicious, and it's yeah. not like baby food. How come you to bring those today? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's just, so then the kids transform these root vegetables into hummus. And That's amazing. Excited. Wow, wow. Okay, so you, you have the kids' angle, and you have your angles as women coming over here and doing things for yourself, something you passionately love, mm -hmm. which I can sense from you both, but what about your own fertility concepts of life? I mean, I don't, I don't want to bust how old you are or how <laughs> young you are. You're way younger than me, so are there some conversations going on in your lives right now about fertility, if you mind sharing? Yes, definitely. Did you have a sister who just had a baby? Yes. See? 
girl. It's, it's the first one in our family, so okay. it's boggling <laughs> to us, <laughs> and especially that. I think that's so interesting that you asked that about conversations, because with her, that was never anything we even talked about. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly, she has created a human. Yeah. And um, for us, we're getting to that age where we need to be <laughs> cognizant of our fertility and be careful. I mean, yeah, but I, I will say, I like my fertility and it's <laughs> how to protect it and guard it, but right? I, I, like having a child is okay. Like, oh. Is that something that's that a lot of you? Because, you know, Zuri in the panel yeah. says she's so afraid of having babies. Zuri, can you just do a conversation quickly? There's no I'm way out. I'm not going to lie. Having a girls. baby? What? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Younger than me. Um, what do you guys, why are you guys so afraid of having babies? Because we can't even keep our tomatoes alive. <laughs> Hey, they are juicy <laughs> and sweet and succulent. I don't know what you're talking about. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Ooh. it just seems so much. Besides keeping them alive, I think you're supposed to love them. Yeah. Pay attention to them. Yeah, sometimes. Teach them. <laughs> Sounds like a real commitment. Zuri, what about you? Is that your reason mm -hmm. you don't want to, too? You know, I just, it's so hard to picture myself as being that number one role model where I'm supposed to have role all model. of the answers. Yeah. Oh! You know, there's so much, you're always going to be afraid of something in life, right? <laughs> you just bite it one day. Anyway, I look forward to all of you girls having your babies when you do, if you choose to. I mean, obviously, that's a choice. But well, give us some healthy tips, Mom. A healthy tips from me? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, it's funny because when I was getting to my late, 20s and I thought heck I was single at the time I said if I don't find somebody by the time I'm a certain age I'm just gonna be a single mom because I loved children so much I wanted one more than the husband <laughs> um, so I had one but um, no I think like you know I think Emily's right something is predestined and you're given what you're given and you take it whether it's on your plate or not right <laughs> and you should enjoy what you have mm -hmm. yeah. so you know we work towards things though right mm -hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. But okay, so Zuri, no more, nothing else. You You're know that was just beautiful. I want to hear more about eating healthy. Eating healthy, yeah. Okay, that's what I was trying. Okay, so people who are really yeah. uh, working towards having a child, what are some tips or what are your thoughts on the nutrients and certain types of foods that, based on your experience, feel that that's going to be advantageous? Well, one, just to make a correlation that I understand, um, soil fertility is largely based around um, nutrient solubility and how the plants can absorb the nutrients. Okay. So that applies to human diets as well. Um, you need to be eating things that will help you absorb and actually get the benefit of all the produce right. that you're eating. Just like the vitamins, for example. Yeah. You know, you half of it, it goes yeah. out the other end. Yeah, right. I would say, um, just like in farming, so when, so polyculture is when you plant many types of plants in um, the same area. Okay. And they, ha they um, t taken together, they grow better than if they were just huh. one. And I feel the same way about the foods that we eat, you know. Right. You can't just eat the sweet yes. potatoes and beets. It, you know, a healthy mix of the cruciferous vegetables yeah. and the leafy greens and the citrus and right it all is working together i'm glad you said that because my yeah. mom if she's listening right now she <laughs> likes cauliflower and she'll eat the whole yeah. thing <laughs> and that was her meal it's like can you diversify yeah. a little bit <laughs> right so there's extremes and then there's a nice healthy mix mm -hmm. right because they each offer clearly you know in the squash you're getting something different than in the banana and i think is it a good kind of a concept to use the colors yeah. as a okay oh, yeah. we love to tell All the right. kids okay, please. Um, yeah. eat the rainbow you know? <laughs> okay and, and i think and we do the same thing mm -hmm. we try to eat as many different colors as right we can. and not just for people who are trying to have babies but even women in their uh you know aging like myself um like you said, the soil, the nutrients, the skin doesn't absorb as much anymore. And so there are ways you can replenish with things you eat, and you have to know which ones work that way. Yes, and how they work in tandem. Um, uh -huh. and, and definitely, it's hard to overdo it on vegetables. What are the super ones, though? You know, they always have the yeah, super yeah, foods. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Is it the green leafy ones we right, always talk about? Right. Yes, in some ways. But it's also um, root vegetables. OK. And like sweet potatoes have the healthy starch. Because because they fortify you in different ways. Right. So, you know, there aren't very many carbohydrates in a tomato, but in a sweet potato, yes. So the superfood, I think, would be depending on what your goal is. 
Okay. If you need antioxidants, let's okay. say you're trying okay. to detoxify, or right. let's say you're trying to maybe lose weight, or mm -hmm. maybe you don't. So I would, I would choose the vegetables based on your intention. Okay. It's, okay. They're not all the same, right? They oh. they offer different. Values. It's so complicated. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But for a healthy diet, yeah. are there like the top fives that you think that you would highly recommend to have a constant diet of? Well. Right, yes, and I would say I had to make a plug for eating foods that can be and are locally grown. Yes, <coughs> which, I can really <laughs> I mean, sure. you know, so I would say strawberries aren't going to make our list because cause we They do grow strawberries somewhere, no? There's this in one Maui. flower. In Maui they do it. Yeah. We've, and I know some home gardeners that have had much better luck than we have. Why is it? Why don't strawberries grow here in Hawaii? They typically need a cold period. Oh. Um, that, mm -hmm. And I know that they're advancing the technology and tricking them over there on Maui or huh. it might just be colder, but yeah. it's, it, they typically need a cold, dormant period. So why are papayas so wonderful here? That's like a fertility fruit for me. That's really? the yeah. ultimate fertility fruit, right? Yeah. The yeah. best. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, why yeah. are they so sweet? They're the best. I you know? Says I'm yeah, I don't know. Emily doesn't <laughs> like papayas. <so laughs> <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about papayas except okay. that I love eating them. And you guys don't eat, for, so you love that, you don't love that. I mean, well. That's the beauty of <laughs> sisterhood. Yeah. Um, but they, okay, can you tell me why a tomato is not a vegetable? Isn't it a fruit? Anything it with a seed? Fruit. Not anything with a seed. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, because, you know, the squash has. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Okay, okay. And so cucumbers. Squash, right, 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 right. But why is tomato a fruit then? Well, Sorry, it's that complicated. It's okay, okay, complicated. Okay, okay, never mind. It's very complicated. <laughs> Life is complicated. <laughs> it's complicated. Okay, women are complicated. <laughs> and you know, I just want to go back to kind of the image <laughs> of um, of fertility. I was looking mm -hmm. back, you know, in kids growing up and listen, uh, reading Greek mythology in school. I don't know mm -hmm. if you remember. Mm -hmm. There's Gaia, which is, who is the goddess of Earth. And then there's the um, Egyptian version is Isis. Isis is the goddess of earth and a mother of all fertility. And it's really, really beautiful to have these kind of uh, images. Mm -hmm. And isn't it interesting that all of everything kind of goes back to the concept of the woman's richness? Yeah, yeah. definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. So is there anything else with the soil that you would like to bring out for people to kind of know how to appreciate and embrace mm -hmm. and to to really be a part of this earth well i think just like you say um the the soil healthy soil gives us life yeah the same way that a woman's fertility brings, brings life right. and i think when we when we look at the farmland or our backyards and we look at it as a living breathing organism just like our bodies it is i mean it has all the same layers and you know yeah. all the same systems going on i think if we could bring that respect and that um regard for what for where life comes from i think is what i would say i hope people care for it as much as we do so you encourage people who do have um access to some kind of soil yeah, yeah. To, to grow something yes? yes yes and be aware as much as you like a soft towel or nice hardwood floor it's another part of our life it just look and feel it it's a and texture. just really connect to it do I you think. walk barefoot on the on, on the soil a lot yes because our sandals are stuck in the mud <laughs> but, <laughs> but um yes it's such a neat feeling Mm -hmm. to have vibrancy under your under your feet and mm -hmm. then there's the power too people yeah, say you yeah. actually walk barefoot on earth it's so much more invigorating mm -hmm. for you yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's so you know you you both are life forces that that really bring the, the the earth to to our kind of small city outlook on life and so are there some tips that you could give our listeners about how to embrace this earthiness yeah, I mean you said so earlier to do it so how well, I think we have to make dirt not the enemy anymore. Yeah. Ah, Just yeah. for okay. a minute. Okay. Right. Everybody, oh, I'm dirty. Oh, yeah. I'm dirty. Um, you can yeah. good. You should be dirty. dirty. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's not a bad problem to have. You can, you know, so many of the kids that come visit the farm 
um, at first, they're kind of like tiptoeing around, and you know, they'll get a little on their sneaker and they'll brush it off. But by the end of it, they're practically doing running through the sprinkler, yeah, you know, yeah. doing think, mud wrestling. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. I think I think that's a good point to not be afraid of it yeah. in the same way. Yeah, that's yeah. a beautiful image. I think. <laughs> I, think <so. laughs> I mean, not pretty, but <laughs> yeah. it's good. Yeah. Anything else? Um, I would say. Oh. There is such a joy in growing something. Yeah. And that same, that feeling that um, our friends who might have a tomato plant on their patio, right. and they, they get their tomato, and they're so happy to share it, right? Yes. They're like, I grew this tomato, and I want you to enjoy it. And that sense of wonder is, we have that just on a larger scale, but that's, that, that amazement, I would say, you could just grow something. Do you think that richness kind of embodies really what life should be about? Yes. Yeah, first step it's tomato, just, second step child. <laughs> child. You know, I think it would really inspire. Grow your tomatoes <laughs> first, and then you go for the Yeah, pain. it would inspire some confidence yeah. okay. and pride in your work. It's yeah. really a neat thing. Okay. So it's kind of like people who want to have a dog. They just grow <laughs> some plants. And if you can keep that alive, yeah. then you can think about the baby. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. And even if they die, people all the time are like, I can't grow anything. Yeah. Just keep trying. No, but tell me. Some people yeah. do have a good time. Some people can't grow know. worth beans. Why? It's their soil. It's their soil. <laughs> <laughs> but that goes back to preparing the soil. Right. 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 We've got to oh bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we've kind of gone through the whole works. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm glad you were here with us to enjoy Emily and Elizabeth's uh, concept of life through their <laughs> fertile soil. Um, thank you, ladies, thank for you. sharing thank all your you. wealth of in information. And please, go out there and please plan something and think about what it means to be fertile. And it's really nice to have a fertile mind, fertile body, and a, a fertile world. So let's all work towards that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.